of her talk, Michael, Crowdsourcing and Virtual Reality Applications for Peacekeeping Study Cases in Tripoli. I'm going to let you say the actual name. <laughs> Great. Welcome him up. We're a round of applause. Thank you. Okay. So that's it. Today we are going to uh, show some work that we have been doing with um, um, the United Nations Global Service Center. So um, let me introduce um, whoop. the work that uh, we do at the, at the um, logistic base. So um, the Global Service Center, as I said, is the logistic base. There are uh, two um, bases, one in Brindisi in Italy and the other one in Valencia, uh, Spain. And what we do is uh, basically to provide uh, all the geospatial and IT services to the peacekeeping missions uh, all over the world. So in Africa, in uh, uh, South America, Europe, and so on. Um, in the logistic base, we are uh, uh, both hosting uh, vehicles, uh, um, food, uh, uh, as well as uh, medicines for the uh, humanitarian depot of the World Food Program. But we also have, uh, um, let's say, um, all the IT services that um, our section is, is offering. So the work that we do is basically to support the peacekeepers in, the, in their patrolling of the areas, as well as to set up uh, other activities to uh, promote peace uh, in, um, in the countries torn by conflict. Within the uh, United Nations Global Service Center, we have a program called the UN, UN Maps. Um, this program, I mean, you can imagine it like the Google Maps of the UN. So basically, um, as the UN, we cannot, um, uh, let's say, rely on, um, on uh, proprietary services for the navigation. So what we do is basically to provide uh, a solution, an application that uh, uses OpenStreetMap as a base map uh, layer. And on top of it, we overlay UN authoritative information for the, let's say, boundaries, um, the uh, village names, the country names, that are like topics that most often uh, they are like um, they could be sensitive at the political level. Um, and uh, with this program in particular, we are supporting uh, uh, currently five peacekeeping missions uh, operating in uh, Somalia, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Central African Republic, uh, uh, Mali, and the region of Abia, which is uh, between uh, Sudan and South Sudan. And uh, we, I mean, the UN Maps is offering the different uh, uh, services, including, uh, let's say, the visualization of the uh, uh, OSM data with the UN uh, um, information on top of it, as well as uh, we are purchasing uh, satellite imagery um, and offering it to the to the peacekeeping. Uh, we also have the three-dimensional uh, visualization solutions that we will see also uh, today. Uh, we provide web services uh, for the operational and the tactical activities, and also uh, we provide solutions for the uh, routing and the geocoding. We also have like a um, uh, web application called the uh, Maps on Demand. This one um, is used by even peacekeeping personnel that um, they are not, uh, maybe some, some of them, they are not GIS professionals. They can produce uh, cartographic prog products uh, directly from this application. So to, just to show a bit the work that uh, we have been doing uh, in OSM, uh, we are basically mapping uh, topographic features uh, in uh, these countries that I mentioned. Uh, we both have uh, um, paid consultants uh, to do that, as well as a crowdsourcing uh, uh, facility under the umbrella of the UN Mappers community. Um, and these are some snapshots. Uh, starting from the left, we have uh, Somalia, uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo and the Central African Republic. We are mapping uh, all the physical features, um, so uh, highways, waterways, villages, land cover, uh, land use. Um, and basically, we are using this data to produce military maps uh, that are using, let's say, uh, I mean, they are automatically rendered with uh, um, like a standard from the NATO. So this is like a uh, zoom on a, on a village in Somalia. Um, so basically we are covering everything by means of uh, um, OSM, OSM ways and also OSM relations. 
So we are not only supporting uh, peacekeeping with these, uh, let's say, day-to-day -day operations, but also with innovative uh, solutions when, when it happens. So um, we launched in, um, uh, I would say, one year, uh, this uh, virtual reality pilot project called the Virtual Operation Center. And uh, basically, um, the, the goal of this project is to provide uh, peacekeepers with a simulated 3D view of an area of interest. So um, the, the usual case is the, maybe the big city in such a way that we can provide, uh, let's say, operational efficiency to the, to the peacekeepers so they can, uh, let's say, plan in a better way their strategical um, activities. But also they can uh, do safe training, for example. Um, so they, I mean, newcomers maybe can, uh, can be trained in these, um, in these uh, let's say, uh, virtual uh, worlds. Uh, for example, for the military uh, activities. Um, it, it is a collaborative tool, so different people can access the same, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 3D digital replica of the, uh, of the city. And also, um, it allows some planning and some analytics. So uh, you will see later that, I mean, we can uh, implement, for example, blast analysis or uh, visualization of uh, POIs uh, from the UN databases. Um, also, we, uh, we tried uh, this solution with the Secretary General, so we can say that uh, he at least he saw one time uh, OpenStreetMap data. Uh, this was in, uh, in Valencia, I think, uh, almost one year ago. So, the question is uh, yet another building mapping project. Uh, actually, uh, yes, but uh, there are some, uh, some complications here. Uh, we need, uh, for sure, accu accurate information. So the geometry and the, the and let's say the geometry of the building has to be precise, and also the footprint has to be at the ground level. Uh, so I mean, in such a way that then all the heights will uh, will make sense. Um, and also we have to add uh, a lot of building characteristics like uh, height, levels, uh, the material or the color to I mean in the to to use in the rendering phase. Um, then we have also the urban environment. This is like, I think, one of the most difficult uh, things for the mappers uh, because um, basically we had uh, um, to compare different, uh, different imageries um, and the different imageries, as you see, have obviously different uh, azimut. So the buildings, I mean, you, you are seeing them from different perspectives if they are uh, very tall. Um, then sometimes they are very close to each other or there are shadows, so you cannot distinguish like the different footprints. And um, there are also, uh, let's say, I mean, it's very useful the comparison of imageries, so to adjust the offsets uh, and uh, try to get the, the real uh, footprint at the ground. And then, <clears throat> of course, in the end, there is a security issues, especially if you want to do field mapping because uh, um, in most of the cities you cannot fly, fly drones, of course. Um, also, I mean, in many African countries you cannot uh, uh, take pictures. Uh, there are also security concerns in involving uh, civilians uh, for the field mapping, like we were uh, uh, in Somalia, for example, we were in touch with some uh, contributors from the Som Somali National University. And um, it happened that, I mean, they were willing to support us uh, but, I mean, one of them got robbed, uh, so, I mean, it's a bit, uh, I mean, even if they say they can manage, I mean, it's always a concern. And, um, and also there are security policies, like in the UN camps, uh, like civilians, uh, even the civilian personnel cannot uh, exit the base, um, only military and uniform personnel uh, can do. So, um, so if, the, if there is some field mapping involved, they should be, I mean, the military personnel should be the one uh, doing that. So I will now speak about the um, first use case that was Mogadishu. This was the real uh, first uh, pilot uh, project. Um, so the procedure was almost the same um, also for the second use case in uh, Tripoli in Libya. So the first thing that we did is to contact the local community to inform them that they were, I mean, we were um, editing there um, and they were also willing to support us. 
Um, then we defined the areas of, uh, areas of interest. So we had the uh, city of Mogadishu and um, we have been told that the security areas to be mapped. So there was like, a, um, um, let's say, focus on the main roads of the city. Um, we produced uh, instructions for the editing because as you saw, like, uh, it's a bit complicated. So in, uh, in the task manager, we were producing uh, instructions in different languages for uh, uh, different, uh, let's say, contributors to um, to use. And then uh, we were proceeding with the crowdsourcing and the validation. So we were opening task manager projects and they were uh, mapping there. Um, so we were engaging with the with the um, community uh, to produce the data of the building footprints. Um, we also were running validation both uh, uh, during the, the the mapping activity, but also uh, after at the end. And uh, I have to say that with good instructions and uh, nice trainings, I mean we didn't have to do much because like um, the footprints were were good already. So we engaged with the UN Mappers community uh, that maybe you got to know in the past. Um, it is a community of 3,500 uh, members, um, including um, GIS uh, uh, and information management working groups in the, uh, in the peacekeeping missions, uh, as well as the military personnel. So we are doing trainings on OpenStreetMap with them. Uh, we have academic uh, academic uh, groups, so universities and uh, and high schools in Europe uh, and Africa, also some some in Asia, and then local communities. Uh, they are, I mean, uh, the the key part because the data that we are editing on OSM in the end will be um, will be uh, used by them even for other applications. And so we organize trainings and. Um, and the mapathons with the local communities in the countries in which we are operating. So this is the result of the editing activity after the UN Mappers activation. So what we have been doing was to prepare the areas um, by, by, let's say, removing the, uh, the buildings that were there before. So actually, as you can see, there were many uh, copy and pasted buildings in the past, uh, but this is the, the result after the, let's say, remapping with the uh, precise uh, footprints. This is just like um, a focus on one, uh, one neighborhood of Mogadishu. And uh, we can see if I can manage the temp mapping 50,000 buildings in a few weeks uh, with the help of the contributors. that are appearing over time. Um, and they are covering, let's say, uh, I mean, we mapped uh, basically uh, the most important neighborhoods and uh, roads of the city. Um, in Tripoli, the story was a bit different because when we got in touch with, uh, when we got in touch with the uh, OSM Libya community, we saw, they told us that they were producing a lot of images. Um, they were collecting a lot of images in, on Carta View. Uh, so basically um, they were covering all the city and the streets. And this was key for our activities because uh, we saw the, I mean, they, it was super useful for the uh, 3D modeling activities. So the texturing was taken directly from Carta View images. Uh, we also engaged with an intern uh, to develop, uh, uh, let's say, a fork of Street Complete uh, that was focusing on buildings. Uh, this because, like, uh, Street Complete has some quests to be to be solved, but there are also some constraints, like not all the types of buildings are are displayed. Uh, and then we have also, um, let's say, uh, we implemented two quests: uh, one about the building materials and another about the building colors. And, uh, and, and also we provided translations in, uh, in Arabic for the local community to use. We didn't use yet this application, but this could be a useful uh, uh, tool uh, if we want to edit specifically uh, building information. So you can choose the color, uh, the material, and so on. Um, so just quickly going about uh, on, on the 3D modeling. So we ingest the data on, uh, we are using SACT engine to uh, get the 3D shapes from the OSM data. 
uh, we are doing with uh, um, the procedural modeling. So we are using the OSM tags to uh, define uh, the, um, the texture of the different uh, uh, 3D buildings. This was uh, this is done with Carta View as well. Um, and the specific buildings are modeled with, uh, with uh, uh, Maya. Um, and also the enhancements of also the, the procedural uh, modeling buildings, they are also um, refined with, uh, with Maya. So I will conclude because we have a demo at the end that I'm already late. We had some challenges. Uh, so the field mapping is dangerous and doesn't scale well, but it could be useful for ground roofing. Um, there are also many just special tools uh, that, I mean, are impossible to, to use basically in these contexts. And uh, it was also nice to have uh, this coordination between IT only and, uh, let's say, GIS professionals. Uh, and in the, in the next steps, we plan to do larger scale estimation of building heights uh, uh, with other methods uh, and also a small scale field mapping, maybe if, uh, if the security um, situations uh, I mean, allow it. Um, we can train maybe peacekeepers to edit field information and also we can explore further usage of the street level imagery. Okay, so uh, let me jump to the video. Yes. How many minutes do we have? Okay. So, I mean, you can see uh, different, um, let's say, settings that we have here in the in the software. So the user can navigate uh, the the maps. Uh, these are all the buildings coming from uh, from OSM. This is from the from the HoloLens, so this is what the user is is uh, seeing. Hello, let's, let's do some questions while you listen to this. Um, so, do you use official topographic or military maps from the government as reference for editing the map? So for the topographic maps, we are uh, uh, making them on uh, our own. So we from uh, we take data from OSM and we render it uh, automatically uh, with um, uh, NATO standards. But um, also the UN data comes from from directly from New York. So um, they are made. I mean, basically uh, in house. No. Uh, Great presentation. I'm oh, sorry. I'll, um, great, great presentation. What is the best way to become a UN mapper? So this is the, the best question. I had in the presentation at the end a QR code in which you can see all the all the links. So the, the best thing you can do is to visit uh, uh, mappers.un.org, and there you will find all the social media um, and as well, uh, let's say how to how to to join the community. Um, and is the app building complete, shared for the public? Uh, actually, yes. Um, it was developed by one of our interns. Um, I don't know if we have like a, yet a UN Mapper, so let's say GitHub account, but maybe we can create one and share it uh, publicly. But also, it is already 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 there, so you should uh, be able to find it. Okay, and. Um, we'll do one more question from Venulus. Do you have problems trusting the data if anyone can change it? Trusting the data. So this is the question that we receive every time. And it's not a matter of uh, trusting the data because the data in, OS, in OSM is, uh, I mean, um, many people are caring about it. So there are NGOs, but also other, other uh, companies. So this is not a matter of trust. Sometimes it's the other way around. We have to trust the users from our community that maybe they had like POIs in the UN camps, and this could be really sensitive information. So we have to trust, like, not to add too much information to, to OSM. Good, good answer and uh, good questions. And this does look interesting looking at this and all the simulation. Thank you. So maybe we can uh, share uh, later in some way if uh, you're interested in to, to see, like, with the the whole video. Um, thank you. Thank you, Michael. A round of applause and 